Hi everyone and welcome back to the Gaming Cockpit Project and in this part we're going to address the problem of uh, dehydration during either Elite Dangerous exploration uh, sessions which can last many hours or indeed endurance racing once they get the racing part of the cockpit up and running as well which can uh, also leave you rather thirsty and what can we do about that well what you can see on the screen in front of you is a uh, drinks chiller and actually a heater as well so it can do both and we're going to get this installed into the cockpit so first thing we need is a cradle to hang this in the frame of the cockpit and we're going to mount it on the right hand side behind the track ball and armrest and uh, so we're going to use the trusty old 3D printer for this and you can see it there making one half of the frame and uh, the reason for that is the way that I designed the frame we can't print it out in one go so we're going to have to print it out in two halves and you can see we've got some indexing holes there and a quick uh, line of super glue on this should be enough to stick it together because it's going to be essentially bolted in place anyway so it'll be nice and rigid if I was uh, looking for more structural strength out of that I'd probably use uh, epoxy resin for um, gluing the two halves together so we'll just hold that together for a little bit whilst the uh, super glue set and it takes a few seconds and everything located nicely and that's ready for installation so there we go, we've hung it in the uh, cockpit and you can see there we've got the drinks chiller mounted in there and that fits quite nicely. Uh, but now we need a plate to go on top which means CNC. Okay, the first tool path we're doing here is just going to be some spot drills for the mounting holes for the plate. And that's just using a uh, 45 degree two feet chamfer mill as the uh, recipe says on the caption and we're going to follow that up with a 6mm uh, HSS twist drill and we're going to go right the way through the path and this also means that I've cleared out some of the material that we need for the counter balls as well Counterbores will use a single flute 4mm end, mil end mil, yes, <laughs> which will uh, ramp down very slowly. Actually, I might look at increasing the speed of this at some point uh, in my tool library. So I think I could probably go down a bit quicker than that. But it's going to ramp down to about 3mm. In fact, it will ramp down to 3mm start the carving out around the outside of the ramp down hole it's created and there's a nice chip spray coming off of that as well as a bit of a bonus Okay, now that's finished, we're going to need to hold down that centre piece. Now, I could have drilled some holes actually thinking about it. I might add those into the tool paths at some point. And we put three uh, screws down to hold these kind of centre cutout piece. I could, of course, just have adaptively cleared that whole shape out of the middle there, but uh, that's a bit wasteful on the tool. <laughs> However, you'll see in a second that um, Perhaps we should have done that rather than screwing down the uh, plate in the middle in the way that I did. So anyway, the old three flute serrated rougher goes uh, burying its way, ramping its way down into the material and then starts the uh, cutout process. And we'll just do a couple of passes at normal speed and then we'll obviously speed this up. And you can see as that's going round it's leaving scallops on the edges so we'll need to come in there after this and clean this up. Now you can also see there's a small skin of aluminium left on the bottom. Oh, there was a, a reason why maybe I should have just um, hogged out the middle of that shape because that just nipped the screw and actually if you can hear the uh, tool path you can tell that that tool is now essentially blunted and probably uh, uh, past 
its prime and won't be used again for aluminium certainly. So anyway, coming in with a single flint 6mm, we'll just take the remainder, I think it's half a mil off the side there. Lovely chip spray again, got the speed and feed worked out for, um, for this kind of tool path quite nicely now. And that just cleans all those scallops off the outside and also because I've got it set a bit deeper it's going to essentially cut through that skin of aluminium left at the bottom of the uh, uh, of the previous tool uh, path which was there basically because the bed's not quite level <laughs> okay so that's the last of those tool paths sorted out and all that remains really is to come around and do a quick chamfer around the uh, edges of the main shapes on this just to get the sharp edges off Right, there's another plate and uh, that's going to finish off the right hand side of the cockpit so just need to do a bit of clean up on this and get it over to the uh, pit and we'll have a look at that. Okay here we are at the uh, cockpit and uh, I've already mounted the mount in here <laughs> so we've got the four bolts just uh, holding this in either side of the extrusion. It's, uh, in there nice and solid although I've left a bit of play just so I can move it backwards and forwards. This is the actual chiller. Now this is just a it's a Peltier device. It's got a bit of dust in it. Um, fairly inexpensive actually off of uh, Amazon where else um, and being a Peltier device it can uh, essentially reverse what it's doing so um, we, we can either chill down to what's that uh, 3 degrees centigrade, 7 degrees centigrade, uh, or there's a 12, and then we can also heat, so we've got 21 and 50 degrees centigrade if you've got uh, coffee or something in there as well, so um, quite handy. It's a fairly, uh, yeah, I mean it's just a fan unit on the back, Peltier device is actually against this wall here, so it cools and heats from this side outwards. It's fine, there's like a metal, I assume there's aluminium cup in there. Anyway, so let's get that in. Fits in there, as I say, needed a bit of play on there deliberately because then we've got our plate, which I've already attached the four nuts and bolts to, as with all the other panels. And hopefully, this fits on. I just need to. Yes, it's a bit snug around this piece. Probably adjust the CAD uh, for another half a mil around there or something just to give it a bit of extra. But no, that fits okay. So let's just get these bolts down. I've already run the uh, 12 volt power lead through, that just needs attaching and then we just need a beverage to put in there and cool down so two secs 
Here we go, fuel for a long night's uh, exploration in Elite Dangerous. Put that in, switch it on and it chills down. It's fairly quiet, there's a, a little 80 mil fan at the back, obviously venting out the um, heat that's being extracted from the from the drink and uh, away we go. So, as ever, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one. Hey, welcome back to the CAD and CAM part of this uh, video. So what we're going to do this time is something a little bit different. We're not going to start with a sketch. What we're actually going to do is we're going to start with one of the previous models that uh, I've used actually for a couple of parts on here. So one was from the armrest and the other model I did on here was the plate to hold the trackball uh, a few videos ago. So what we've got on here is the extrusions and that's the reason I'm doing this because I've got the extrusions already modeled in here it's quite handy to see those so I can work out how uh, the two components I'm going to make or actually one of them split into two so there's three parts really ha how they're going to all work once they're on the cockpit itself and the first thing we're going to do and the, probably the most important thing is work out how we're going to get the chiller unit which you saw in the video mounted within here now i figured the best way of doing this was to make a kind of cradle and use the 3d printer to print that and then cap that with a plate that you also saw just in the video which just fitted on top so we will go to a sketch now uh, but it's also probably worth pointing out that all the other items that I've modeled in this I've turned into actual components rather than left them as bodies so that we don't get any interference between them and let's just get the sketch up there we are so what we needed is a sketch and the first thing we needed to do was draw if you like a plan view of the chiller unit and really there's no other way of doing this than getting the old uh, digital calipers out and start measuring things. It did have a few measurements if you notice right back at the beginning of the video uh, on the uh, three projection view that was on the Amazon website. Uh, which did help a little bit and gave us at least some ballpark measurements but really we needed to get digital calipers out and start measuring stuff and probably the most the trickiest one to do was working out this area it was obvious that when they designed that chiller they just did a circle for the drawn drinks hold apart itself this piece on the back was a little awkward so i had to take several measurements at the extremities here and here to work out how that blended in also then worked out various radiuses as well you can see these curves here uh, that was actually a radius curve whereas this one here which is actually split into two was uh, a three-point curve um, to blend if you like from this radius out into this kind of bow shape here so it was a little bit fiddly but um kind of got there in the end i could have the other way i could have done this thinking about it was i could have uh, drawn an outline on a piece of paper and then scanned that into pdf and projected it onto this plane here and used that but this was this worked out okay anyway now we've got that i also did some offsets as well of the original outline to just give us a bit more tolerance if you like and if you noticed on the plate that was pretty uh, lucky that I did that because it, the plate only just fit around the actual object so always a good idea to give yourself a bit of tolerance if that's not going to cause you engineering problems I'm gonna bring up the two holder bodies and you can start to see how I actually made this so I started off with just a cube of material and extruded that down then I extruded this outline shape down to the depth I needed and that, again just measure that on the actual drinks chiller itself and then did a cutaway using this outline shape here and then really it's a case of working out where I need to have things open and you do need some open areas on this 
because it's got to take in essentially cold air from the sides and then there's a fan unit as you noticed on the back which expels the hot air essentially the heated air from the you know heat that is drawn out of the the chiller compartment here and blows it out of the back so the way we did that is it started just to draw shapes let me just get rid of that one there so it started to draw sketches on the face of the cube and essentially they're just square outlines with uh, filleted a filleted square there and then extrude cut all the way through the material and removing vast quantities of uh, what would be plastic 3d printed <laughs> and um, at the same time making the part obviously quicker to print and cheaper as well uh, so we did one from front to back and then we did another one from side to side to essentially take the sides out let me just switch these extrusions off a second there we go um, yes and a couple of them I did the uh, mounting holes straight through as well at the same time uh, and put some counter sinks in there as well there's another sketch yeah there's a sketch there look uh, that's that one so did the counter sinking through there and you can actually just extrude and cut the other way as well if you know how far it is and I do so that was not a problem uh, that got our four mounting holes which are going to mount onto the side of the extrusion uh, which saved us a lot of aggravation when it came to milling out the plate on the top because we didn't need to do anything other than mount the plate directly onto the extrusion and secure that and one last area is we then split this model in half down this plane here and the reason for that is of course we can't print this shape directly on the printer because you'd either have this overhang here if you try to print it from the bottom upwards or if you tried to print it on this axis you'd still have the overhang on this area here and you certainly couldn't do it that way there's no way you bridge across that enormous gap there so the only way to do this was essentially split this in half and print each side separately so we can print from this plane so let's just take this uh, try and get this the right way around there we go yes so we print from this plane upwards for the gray part and then similarly from this face downwards if you imagine that's up the other way if i can do that there we go and um, print the other way for for the blue half um, and the 3d printer can cope with that also what we did let me just turn one of those off we also used some circles with about half a millimeter between them so uh, to put some posts indexing posts or locating posts if you like and holes in the other side so the holes obviously were half a millimeter more in diameter than the posts that go in there generally when you're 3d printing if you try to get the two tolerances too tight then uh, you won't get the two parts together and as you saw once we printed that out then we can just super glue those together okay so that's the holder and then the plate which uh, if you've been following this series is pretty much the same as every other uh, plate that I've cut for this so it's just um, four counterboard mounting holes and then use the original sketch of the outline just to um, cut out the internal area uh, the cam side of this it's really nothing to it so we just do our spot drills so that we don't have a wandering drill bit when we come in with a six mil drill here to drill out the holes you may as well drill those all the way to through from the top to the bottom rather than doing the counter balls first um, because uh, that just removes more material rather than then having to mill it out although it doesn't really matter uh, i just prefer to do that did our counter balls with a four mil single flute end mill coming with the adaptive rather than slotting uh, six mil adaptive again uh, sorry six mil three flute roughing end mill for adaptive on both the outline and the piece in the middle uh, i manually drilled some holes to hold this down and as you saw on the video didn't have enough clearance height 
and it nicked one of the screws which has kind of ruined that tool but yeah okay <laughs> that's just part of the hazards of doing this uh, and then come in with a clean up because that adaptive is just a roughing tool path and then finish off with a chamfer which ran around all the edges and and that's pretty much it so um if there's any questions at all for for the cad or the cam by all means put them in the comments and i'll do my best to answer them i'm not the world's uh, best expert on fusion 360 but i tend to get by and um as ever thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next video